So one of the questions we get a lot is what are some great add-ons, apps, and extensions that teachers can use for the Chromebook? And what better way than to get that than from another teacher who's in the classroom using this device. So we're here at, we're here at Northeast Middle School with the teacher who's going to share her favorite apps, add-ons, and extensions on this week's episode of IT. So we are on the campus of Northeast Middle School. This is a great learning environment. We are here in the Media Center. This is a beautiful place. They have a lot of great things up here for students to see. Quotes, uh, paper machés. It's a really great place. I really thank um, the school, the principal, for opening their doors to uh, IT Weekly. And we actually have one of Northeast's own with us joining us. You want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Elizabeth Jordan. I teach AVID 6th and 7th grade and also 7th grade language arts here at Northeast. Yes, and Ms. Jordan is here and she has volunteered to share some of the great apps and tools that, that she has been using. So let's go ahead and get, and get started with one of your favorite tools that you have on the phone. And one of my favorite tools that we use is Quizlet. Something that may be familiar with everyone, but we use it for vocabulary study and engagement. So many of us are familiar with Quizlet and as you can see I have different um, a variation of vocabulary words on Quizlet for different things. Um, if you are looking to add a set of vocabulary words you can choose to create a set or you can look at your own study sets. Um, you can choose sets from other teachers or you can use your own words. You can also add in images and you can add voice recordings to the words and it will sometimes even give you the auto definition and you can choose the word in English and Spanish. Uh, if you already have the word set in a document, you can choose how you want to do that. Some of my favorite features of the um, Quizlet from my students would be um, some of the games that they have for the students to play. There, there's match where they match the words to definitions or vice versa. There's a gravity game. They have to spell the words out, so it kind of helps with spelling without having to actually do it. And Quizlet Live is a very engaging game where the students compete in teams to um, get the words correct, except it's a blind competition. So they are not actually sitting next to their partners. Um, their partner could be across the room from them, and the students get very excited to play. Also, with one of the subscription features for Quizlet that you can see is the class progress. So you can see how much students are actually using Quizlet, what features they're using, and you can tell what they're doing. In addition to that, you can see what words they may have missed, um, which words they're not missing, and whatever illustrations that you add to your Vocabulary will always be there as well as the sound yeah. will to have always a strong be there and earnest desire. for the students so they, they can see. Um, as a teacher, you have an editing tool always there for you. So those are just some of the features for Quizlet Live that are Quizlet that I really enjoy. Wow, that's a lot of great things that you can do inside of Quizlet. I know that's a, that's a favorite of teachers. And you know, there's one thing that I see teachers use a lot with that is the flashcard feature. So um, you, you show them a lot of great things. So that was one good one. What, what's another one you like to use? Another app I really, really love is Google Keep. It keeps everything for me. All of my sticky notes that I normally would have everywhere are all in one place. One of my favorite apps for both my Chromebook and my cell phone is Google Keep. Uh, Google Keep is, to me, like sticky notes for your computer. And you can use Keep to do different things. I use Keep to make notes to myself as reminders for things like conferences, things that I have to do, um, things like that. If you want to create a note for yourself, you just you would left click and click notes and you can see your notes. Um, you can edit and you can create different labels for your notes. All of these would be my avid notes, different things that I have to do. You can take a note. So we wanted to create a new note. Um, about our avid site team maybe who's on the site team um, we can do that you can also add and share notes with other people so if you wanted to add someone that you may be um, someone else in student uh, another teacher somewhere you can add that person 
So as an owner, and you all can take notes together, they can add different things with you. Additionally, you can change colors and you can create images if you find a picture or something like that. Also, in my notes I had in one of the other things we'll go over, um, just as a note, I can actually add the extension for Google Keep and it will take notes for me. And all I have to do is click the Keep extension up at the top of my screen and it will record whatever's on the screen for me. So that's Google Keep in a nutshell. There's so much more to it, but it's like sticky notes for your computer. Yeah, Google Keep is one of my favorite tools as well. We actually did App of the Week for that one last year. So those are two really good tools. So uh, I'm really interested to hear what that third one is going to be. The last one is actually not an app or an extension, it, but it's a really great tool for reading with your students on all levels. It's called Common Lit. And it's a free web page and we'll explore some of the options that you can do with your students. So one of my other favorite, my new favorite things is Common Lit. It is not an app, however, commonlit.org is an excellent web page for different literacy resources. Um, you can go into Common Lit and create classes and similar to some of the other things that you can do. Um, so what I did, I just created a class. I added them and just chose a class. And once you create your class, you just copy the link. I chose to copy the link and add it in to my Google Classroom. And once you copy the link, you can assign students different texts. There are a variety, a very wide variety of texts. You can choose by the library, a theme, or text sets. I like choosing by the theme. That way, if we're doing a novel in class or we're studying something in particular, in class, I can choose some things here. So there are different things that relate on different for different age groups. Growing up is one of my favorites. What does it mean to be grow, to be grown up? And for my seventh graders, we've looked at different things. You have poet, plenty of poetry, but you also have informational text, a myth, and um, an article on philosophy. So with Common Lit, you have a variety of different types of liter a variety of literature. Students will go and read the article. And you can choose how you want students to answer certain questions. And when you choose to do guided reading, um, the students will get one section at a time, so it will chunk it for students who may need some sort of accommodations. And there are other things in Common Lit, but Common Lit is really great to explore for a variety of texts. So those were some really great tools. I always love when people come on and share new things. I learn a lot, and I appreciate Ms. Jordan for being here and sharing some of the tools that she likes to use in her classroom. I do see you are slowly trying to get me out of the show, though. I appreciate that. Uh, but you did pick a great teacher doing great things, three great resources, great tools. Um, so hopefully, maybe next week I can be on again? No. Okay. That's going to do it for this week's episode. Make sure you check us out next week for another edition of ITV.